40 years ago in the city, right behind me, I found out that God has a wonderful plan for my life. And then we met, and we found out together we can really make a difference for Jesus. We've been sharing this message, telling people all over the world, we want you to know God has a wonderful life planned for you. So good to have you with us today. We're gonna to have some fun on today's program. My name's Casey Treat. Good to have Kayla Treat with me. And uh, we're talking about this as our story, mm -hmm. sharing some stories, some testimony, and uh, what God is doing in our lives and in some of our fr friends' lives, our mm -hmm. church family. Today, you're gonna to hear an amazing story. It really yeah. is good. Beautiful lady in our church. And you know, Kay, you never know who feels inferior. Yeah. Looking outwardly, yeah. they may be beautiful. Mm -hmm. You may be jealous. You may be think, man, I wish I was like them. Mm -hmm. And yet they may be feeling inferior. It's cool. very common in our society. We're so quick to judge on everyone else is perfect and I'm the one that has the issues. Yeah. And that's why every time we post a social media picture, it's the perfect picture. Right. And then right. we add filter after filter to it because we <laughs> want to make sure everyone else thinks Everything else is perfect. The problem is then we, we believe that about others. Oh, look at how good their life is mm. and look at how good their family is or their income or they got the nice car. We just assume everyone else is perfect, but my life is broken because we believe the filters uh, that we see. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about how do we overcome that? How do we rise above that? How do we get past our filters, right? Not only on our phone, but in our mind. Mm -hmm. Remember, go to caseytreat.com. Check out all of the series there. This whole series is there at caseytreat.com or get the Christian Faith Church app. Go to your app store, Christian Faith Church app, and you can walk with us every day in our faith culture, all of our other tools there. We will be right back. Hey, we're going to have some fun talking about this idea of how we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do we live in shame and pain or condemnation, mm -hmm. or do we live as overcomers in Christ? And you're going to hear a wonderful testimony today that will inspire you mm -hmm. and uh, from an amazing woman that you may be shocked at some of the things that she went through. So make sure and stay tuned for that. Um, okay, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul said, we no longer judge people by their flesh. Yeah. So it's not their color, race, nationality, age, yeah. gender, whatever but we now are the righteousness of God in Christ. I think most Christians struggle with that. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they, I don't want to be arrogant or I don't want to say something that seems too spiritual. The fact is that's just Bible, mm -hmm. that God made you righteous and you can see yourself and believe that you are the righteousness of God and live above the shame, right? Totally. Live above the pain. Totally. I think the, for me, the key in that is how you see yourself. You know, do you see yourself as the righteousness of God? I love the scripture says the lamp of the body is the eye. Mm. If the eye is good, the whole body's good. How you see. I think it's how we see ourselves. And sometimes depressions and anxieties come back to just that view. How is it that you see yourself? How is it you see the world? How is it you see your future? Mm. And so much of the time, if you're looking at your life and it's falling apart, you think it's falling apart. You see it as falling apart. You see it as less than what others have. Those anxieties come in, those depressions come in, those negative thoughts come in. Yeah. It comes down to what is it that you're looking at? How do you see your life? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as the person God's called and as the righteousness of God? Mm. Or do you see yourself as that failure or not as good as the, your neighbor, you know, the Joneses down the street kind of thing? Yeah. You know, through the years, we've had a few times when we supported families going through tragic circumstances, mm. right? Suicide in the family. That's got to be the worst. And I think every time that we have faced that, it's a shock. It's mm -hmm. like we didn't know that the person was feeling so bad mm -hmm. or feeling like they yeah. were worthless and wow. feeling like they should just die. We did. We saw them as beautiful. We mm -hmm. saw them as young people with such potential. But if you don't see it yourself, yeah. You can never believe what God says totally. about you. You never experience God's will. Totally. Living in that broken view of yourself, 
living in that broken view of your world or what God's called you to, living maybe with the broken view that God hasn't called you or you're not as special, or, mm. it comes down to that view. How do you see yourself and, and what are the filters that you're looking through, the filters that you view yourself with and the filters that you're viewing the world and, and even putting on God? Maybe you put a filter on God as he's not loving or not forgiving or... Sure. There's so many filters that we've allowed that are lies and we're looking through our entire world with a filter that's a lie. Yeah, so you've got to get to the word. You've got to take the scriptures that we're sharing with you and you can get them at the uh, Christian Faith Church app mm -hmm. or get them as we're teaching them mm -hmm. right here on the program and say that scripture is more true yeah. than what I feel. Yeah. I feel like a loser, but God said, I'm the righteousness. Mm -hmm of God, that I'm a new person in Christ, that I'm an overcomer yes. in him. And that's where the battle is. That's where the fight of faith yeah. is. That's where renewing the mind has to take place. And if you believe the lie about yourself, you'll be like Eve reaching to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, wow. trying to get something she already had. Wow. But the enemy lied to her, didn't he? Well, we're praying, we're believing with you. God's Word is working in you. Today we have a wonderful testimony from one of our members, a great lady. Uh, she bears her heart and bears her soul, and I think it will encourage you. So here is Morgan. Hi, my name is Morgan Warren, and I've been a part of Christian Faith for 10 years. There was never one moment that I think that I became depressed. It was something that happened over the course of my lifetime. Growing up, I would hear things that people said about me or I would do things and think, oh man, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not qualified enough. Um, so it was just kind of like this heaviness that started to form, like this darkness. Um, and I just believed like, okay, this is who I am. I always felt that I had to accomplish things in order to be valued. Um, when I was a senior in high school, I started running in pageants and that became like my life. I wanted other people to see me as valuable. And I thought if I could win this, people will see me as important. And then after a few years of competing in pageants, I finally won a title and it, nothing changed. I felt the same. I didn't feel valued. I didn't feel important. And so even my wins felt like fails because I just felt the same. Um, in fact, I think that it made it even worse because now I was competing against people and I was never enough. I just felt like I couldn't reach that point where I was valuable. Things got really bad was when I lost vision. You know, I came to church with my dad um, and there was one message that Pastor Wendy talked about and that was when she spoke about the mountain in her backyard and being able to see that um, on all the different days, you know, where, whether it's cloudy or um, stormy and the mountain was always there and that was God. You know, the mountain in this case was God. And so I felt like, okay, even when I can't see him, he's still there. Even when I can't feel him, he's still there. And that doesn't mean that I don't have a purpose anymore. It just means that it's a cloudy day, that it's a stormy day. And so I had this hope that started to build up. And um, like there would be days where I would feel like I was breaking down, like I was spiraling back into that, like, okay, I'm not enough. There's no point, there's no purpose. And I would get in my car and drive and I would usually find myself here and I would sit in the parking lot and I would pray and I would just, you know, ask God to show me what he wanted from me, to give me some kind of like insight and some kind of vision. And the more that I just leaned into him, the more that I would find myself getting the courage to take little steps. I started coming more regularly and I just found that doors started to open. I started tithing and things happened that I couldn't explain and the only explanation for it was God. For people that struggle with depression, I think it's really important to remember that God called you with a purpose and you have to lean in every day. It's an active fight. Um, 
that you're seeking him, that you're choosing him, even when your thoughts go the wrong way. The devil wants to get in your head and he wants to make you go down that route, but that's not what God wants. He wants me to keep fighting and to choose him. And as I continue to choose him, then I experience more joy. And that's what I think, that's how you overcome depression is you just keep putting him first and you keep seeking him. Because when you choose him, that's how you win. Yeah, that's how you win. 20 million Americans every day struggle with depression. 10% of our population. And over a lifetime, one out of every four of us will be clinically depressed, as analyzed by the counselors, the doctors, the clinicians. 25% of us will struggle with depression. And it's a strange thing, but in a world of convenience and prosperity, depression increases. In fact, as they study cultures around the world, the poorer cultures have less anxieties, less stress, less pressure, less depression than the more prosperous societies. So the more stuff we have, the more we have to worry about. And so we see many at the end of their lives who are just so sad, just so down. They're lonely, and they've lost vision and hope and purpose. So today, let's look to the Word. Let's look to the Lord. Let's find out what God says about these things. And He speaks to them because God knew these will be issues that every person has to deal with. And He gives us answers. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34, Jesus says, You cannot serve two masters. Either you'll hate one and love the other, or else be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, in this passage, mammon speaks to material wealth, money, stuff, things, jobs, all that we think are important in this natural world. Isn't it interesting that he focuses on that and he says, these are the two masters, and you got to pick which one you're going to serve. You can't serve both. You serve God or you serve material gain, your job, your income, the things that you can buy. The next verse, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added. The Lord wants you to have all the stuff. Just keep your priority right. Keep your God. Keep number one. Seek first. You can seek other things. You can seek success on fantasy football but not right now, during church. So you brothers, put your phone away. Right? You can seek the career, seek the things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those other things will be added to you. And what's the next verse? Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. So tied to who do you serve, what's your priority is worry, anxiety that becomes depression, fear of not having enough, fear of not keeping up, fear of not looking good becomes a depression and an anxiety that can cripple and hurt your life. I love the way the Message Bible said it in Matthew chapter 6. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come when they come. And the Living Translation said, seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he'll give you everything you need. Don't worry about tomorrow. 
Today's trouble is enough for today. So we've got to have this mentality that I plug into God, that I lean in. Morgan said it so well in her story. She leaned into God, and these other things started drifting away. You know, you really can't stop thinking about bad things, but you can start thinking about something else. You can't get rid of old memories, but you can build new memories that take their place. You can't ignore negative thinking, but you can start godly thoughts, and pretty soon that negative thought will be a thing of the past. So as you seek first the kingdom of God, pretty soon these other things begin to drift away. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Some of us think we know more than God or that the thoughts of this world are more powerful than God's. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Notice how trust translates to health and strength. People who struggle with anxiety, with depression, with mental illness, with mental health problems need health and strength. Where's it going to come from? It's going to come when we trust in the Lord and get our focus, get our attention on the right things. What we've been doing in the world keeps taking us down a dark path. But God wants to lead us in a light path. The message says it like this. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health, and every bone will vibrate with life. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. That's what we believe. And so it's, it's all about who do you trust? Who do you trust? When your children are going through a pain, a problem, a tr you know, trouble at school or wherever it may be, mom and dad say to them, it's okay. We're with you. We, we, we're, we're standing together. We'll pray together. And you're going to overcome. You're going to get through this test. You're going to get through this class. It's going to be all right. You want them to trust you because they're young. They're trying to figure it out. They're, they're caught up in the moment. But you're saying to your children, no, trust me. Trust what I'm telling you, and you're going to be fine. Well, your Father in heaven is saying to you, trust me and stop trusting everything, every voice, every message, everything you hear from this world because I got you. I've already been there. I've already decided you're an overcomer. You're my son. You're my daughter. We're going to win this thing. Amen? So God says, I'm with you. You're healed. You're blessed with abundance. I will guide you. The spirit of this world says you're in trouble, you're sick, you're not good enough, and you'll never have enough. Who do you believe? Who do you trust? Let's trust in the Lord. You can't serve two masters. You got to pick one and trust him and believe that he's got you. He's going to help you. He's going to lead and guide you to success. Oftentimes what happens is over time we build up strongholds. The Bible calls them strongholds in our mind. They're, they're the arguments in our mind, the things we tell ourselves, our self-talk that gets negative, that gets dark, you know, and my marriage isn't going to make it, and, and I'm never going to be pretty enough, rich enough, strong enough, whatever. And those strongholds 
take a strong hold in your thoughts and they can dwell in your mind. Isn't it strange how we can just focus on those thoughts and carry and think about those things all the time when we don't have to, but they become a part of our way of thinking. So Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge or the word of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So through the years, Wendy and I have practiced every thought can be overcome with a thought from God. So if the thought is, I have cancer, no. God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. He bore your sickness. He carried your disease with your stripes. You, with his stripes, you were healed. So that's our thought. We focus on that. We don't keep the negative thought. You have to fight every thought. And at first, you feel like it's impossible. That's why some of you won't even try. Because the thoughts of lack and the thoughts of pain and the thoughts of loneliness and the thoughts of hopelessness consumed your mind and have such a stronghold, you don't think you could ever overcome it. You don't think you can ever change it. So you have to start small, and, and he called it warfare. It's a battle for your mind. It's a battle for your attention. That's why there's 24-7 negative news. That's why you get these pop-ups that are telling you bad things. That's why you can look, hear, see everywhere something that would hurt you. And so you got to really decide... I'm going to keep my thoughts from God. I'm going to keep my thoughts on God's word. I'm going to truly lean in and make sure I stay focused on the right thing. In Joshua chapter 1, the Bible said, Have not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Dismayed means that overwhelmed, discouraged, uh, afraid of the situation, right? People oftentimes, I'm not going to go for that new job. What if I fail? I I don't want to have a life group. I don't want to have to talk to people. I get too nervous around people. Uh, I don't want to step into this new opportunity because it's just too much for me to handle. I'm overwhelmed, So it's an attitude, it's a mentality. And if you begin to hug your fear, it's gonna grow. You hug your mental health problem, it's gonna get bigger. But you choose to trust the Lord, it's gonna go away. So fear knocked on the door, anxiety knocked on the door, depression knocked on the door, faith opened it, and there was nothing there. So that's how you have to approach it. I'm choosing to trust God, right? I will be strong and courageous, and I will not allow the negatives of this world to overwhelm me. I'm not saying they're not real. They are very real, but you can win. You can overcome. You can rise above them, but you will not do it by feeding your fears. So many times people read the diagnosis. They read the definitions. I want to know more about my sickness. I want to be able to describe what's going on. I never read that stuff. I'm getting rid of it. I don't need to know about it because I'm not going to have it. I don't want to talk about it because I know where I'm going. Right? So feed your faith, starve your fear. Feed your vision, starve your depression. Feed your confidence and starve your anxieties. Don't let those things take over your life. Proverbs 29 says, where there's no vision, people perish. So the enemy comes, he 
It gives you that negative thought. You're never going to get the job you want. You're never going to have the, the career you want. You're never going to have the family. You got a divorce. It's over. This is the end for you. And so we just start feeding those negative thoughts and our vision, our hope, our joy for the future gets smaller and smaller. Today, I want to believe with you that you start rising to a new place of peace, a new place of joy, a new place of confidence, a new place for you and God are living this abundant life. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit helps you pull down those strongholds and trust in the Lord with all your heart. And you're going to see great things you never knew that God could bring to your life. Fear keeps attracting what you don't want. But faith will bring what you do want. Well, we've had fun today talking about our story and uh, sharing stories of others. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just believing, Kay, that our friends, our audience, family members will begin to see yeah. I am who God says I am, right? Yeah. See yourself through his eyes, not yeah. through your own negative eyes. Totally. And I love, one of the things I love the most about this series was we actually got all of the series topics from our church in a, just a big church poll. We had everyone just mm. send us, what do we need to teach the most on? And they asked for these topics. And I think that'll represent what you're looking for the most. And hopefully over these last few weeks, you've heard a lot of stories that are more real and honest testimonies you could relate to. And you've realized you can overcome. You can rise above that anxiety, the yep. depression, that that's not who God created you to be. That's not the future he's called you to live. There's more for you, that God's got more for you, not just us, yep. for them. For everyone. And maybe you've been battling that depression or those suicidal thoughts or that condemnation, or you know someone that's yeah. in that fight. Mm -hmm. Get them to watch these stories. Get them to hear these messages. Tell them you're there, you're praying, you're believing with them. Get them to caseytreat.com. You go there, caseytreat.com, and let this series build you up. Remember, you can always connect with us at the Christian Faith Church app. We love you. We're praying with you. Thank you so much for your support of Casey Treat Ministries. We value our partners. If you would like to do a one-time donation or become a monthly partner for $25, $50, or $100 a month, call us today at 253-943-2400 or go to caseytreat.com.